All right, in this video, we are going to look at how to make an NFL scoreboard. I got a request. I've done some digging. I've learned a little bit more about Regex and Tasker and sending that stuff over to KOWP. Um, let me go over, let me show you what we're going to do. This is going to be a two part series as well because uh, Tasker is going to be one part of the tutorial, KOWP is going to be the next part. But let me come over here to week one. I'm over at NFL.com. I'm pulling images from NFL.com. I'm pulling the scores and I'm pulling the dates. We could pull even more information. But here we are, week one, Thursday, September the 8th, Panthers, Broncos, 20 to 21. Bam. Um, we had 16 games in week one. If I come down here to the very bottom, the, the oldest game uh, in week one was Monday, September the 12th, between the Rams and the Niners, 0 to 28. Not only that, but we can also, using Tasker and KOWP, we can cycle through these weeks. In week two, we had 16 games. I don't know if you noticed, but all the images and scores updated. And the only downside to this, if I do this too fast, it might get out of sync. But sometimes it's just a quick switch. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump up to week eight. Now, I did that really quick. It might get out of sync, but sometimes we can fix that real quick just by letting it pause, letting Tasker breathe a little bit. Let's see it, see how this one's kind of out of sync week eight, but let me do this real quick. Let's, let me jump up to week nine, give it a second, and now if I jump back to week eight, it should be okay. So Jags and the Titans, bam. And it's because I was, I was going boom, 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 just jumping real quick, and it kind of... KOWP and Tasker, I mean, there that's a lot of stuff getting sent. Trust me. There's uh, 32 images, 32 scores, some dates. There's a lot of communication going on back and forth. It's okay if it gets out of sync. Like I said, it's a quick fix by stopping, letting the apps breathe a little bit, and then pressing the button. So week eight, Jags and Titans, 22 to 36. Bam. Down here at the bottom, 10 to 20 between the Vikings and the Bears on October the 31st. Now, if I go over to week nine, you may have noticed that a moment ago. Some of these scores are blank, and that's because that's exactly what NFL.com is showing. Now, the way I do this, I know there's some um, drawbacks to it. You know, doing the regex, the minute, if, the, if NFL.com decides to change part of their HTML, their source code and stuff, the regex may not match up. But if they do that, we can go into task room and quickly fix it because once you've messed around with regex a lot, you get more and more comfortable with working with uh, crazy source code, as you're going to see right here in a moment. But there we are. You know, it's showing, okay, I didn't even show you week nine, blank scores down here at the bottom, 43 to 28. That was a game played last night between the Falcons and the Bucks. And before I jump into the tutorial, a big thank you goes out to David. I don't know you. I can't. I don't even want to try to pronounce your last name, man. But I had a a question in the previous one of my previous regex videos where I want to send over. Even though you know these 32 images, not 32 in this case, since there was 13 games, these 16 images, I didn't feel like doing KOWP send variable so many times. We can loop this thing and use an intent to broadcast a variable as well. And that's what, uh, David, I made the request in my last, one of my most recent tutorials on regex. He sent me this link here, and it covers um, how you can loop and send an intent with a variable, and you can broadcast that to KOWP from Tasker. So a big thank you right there. That saves a lot of pieces in a task. And, um, yeah, it, it makes it work so much better uh, and, and quicker on, on the back end of trying to get things set up. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. Part one, we're going to cover tasker piece, the tasker piece. So I'm just going to go over here. Um, I have a three tasks that we're going to create here. Uh, the main one I'm going to focus on in this video is NFL.com. Um, but under VARs, I have a global variable, and it's called week. I'm just going to change this to one just so I can match everything up. I'm going to come back to week one on NFL.com. And let me go over here to task, to NFL.com, and I'm just going to run this task real quick. This is the task that I'm going to go through with you. And as you can see, it just ran, bam, just like that. What it just did in that task, it pulled images, it pulled scores, it pulled dates. And it depended on what week we were on. So let me go ahead and view the source code for this uh, week one. So let me select all, and let me come on over here to regex R, and we're going to do some regex on this stuff. All right. This is the one, 
uh, not a one tough part, but this, this is where things can get a little bit crazy. When you're trying to go through this source code and you're trying to find certain pieces, you're going to have to hunt for it. You're going to have to do a little bit of grunt work. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cut past us hunting because I've hunted already. And in week one, here's what I, here's some things I do when I'm trying to diagnose this stuff or troubleshoot. I count how many games in this case. Um, there were one, two, that's five, eight, 11, 14. There's 16 games. And if I'm trying to pull images, I need to pull 32 images then. Well, I hunted through this source code here. And what I realized is this. If I go over to RegXR and this is, well, <laughs> okay, pause. Let me talk about the first task. HTTP get uh, the website, which is this website here, nfl.com slash score slash 2016 slash reg for regular season and then percent week. That's going to be tied into this a little bit later when we want to skip over weeks and stuff like that. But this this percent week will be one, two, three, four, all the way up to how many ever weeks we have in the season, which is going to be uh, 17 in this case. All right, that's the first piece. And something else in HTTP Git, I did not save this as a text file. You don't have to do that. I mentioned that in previous videos where I like to save it as a text file. You don't have to do that by any means because once it does HTTP Git, it will save or Tasker will store this as a global variable percent HTTPD. That is going to be across all applications of Tasker. All of you who have Tasker, whenever you do HTTP Git, it's going to uh, store this as this global variable. Now, what is that variable actually going to be? It's going to be this entire source code that I'm getting ready to do some regex on. And I don't know why it just did that. My computer's just being slow because I'm doing all this junk at one time. Here we go. This is the source code. This is what that variable is in Tasker. I said we had 16 games in week one, which means I want to pull 32 images. And that's this first part of this task is where I want to get the links to the images. Well, I hunted around through all this crazy stuff, and I found that if I did a variable search and replace, and I look for the following. I'm typing this stuff in. So dot star team logo dot star bam. All right. Check out how many matches we get. 32 matches. Well, there's 16 games. There's two pictures per game for the two teams, so I should have 32 pieces. Perfect. I'm going to scroll through here and I'm going to go to my first one. As you can see, there's some blue pieces flying across the screen. And I'm going to go to where I have the last or the first one since I'm scrolling up. It should be any moment now. I think it was right there. Yep. I know it was somewhere a little bit more than uh, right around halfway down the page. All right. These are the matches that it's matching up. Let's check out what this match is giving us. Um, team logo, it turns out this right here, this team logo, matching it with a, um, basically the dot star, okay, it's going to do team, le team logo and the dot star is going to match everything. All of this stuff in blue is technically on one line. Regex matches per line only, unless you convert it to like a string, which I've also discussed. But the only reason why it's down here on our new line here is because we ran out of space over here. But the, all this is one line of our code. And by me doing this little less than symbol with a dot star, it's matching everything in front of team logo on this line. So it's matching all the way back to the beginning of the line. And then I want to match all the way to the end of the line. So I'm going to do dot star. I'm being greedy. So I want to keep on going until I see this last uh, greater than symbol, which you see right there. That's going to pull that. How many matches? 32 of them, I want to store all of those matches and I store it in a local variable called percent pick. So it's going to be 32 pieces and within this, what we want to get actually is going to be this part right here. The HTTP uh, and then it ends in .png. I want to get that so I can pull put that into KLWP and have it pull that image from the net. All right, so I'm storing my matches in percent pick. Let's go back. Now, when it stores these matches, let me go ahead and add a test piece into here just so you can learn things as we go. So let's flash. And remember, since it stored these matches, it's going to store them in an array that's separated by commas. So to show an array, I have to do percent whatever variable I stored it as, and I need those parentheses. And let me take this guy and move it on up some.
And I'm going to do this. This is just a way that helps you see really what's going on in the background as we go through and do each piece. All right, so right here. So remember, we took the source code. We searched for this. We got 32 matches. I want to uh, store those in an array. And then let me flash that array real quick. So as you can see here, quickly it did pull all of those things. I don't know if you can notice that because it flashed so fast, but basically it's doing this to this and it's storing all of these matches, all 32 of those matches um, in that array. However, for me to go through here and cut out the pieces I don't want, that's where we're going to have to, or not necessarily cut out the pieces or maybe pull the pieces out that I want. I'm going to uh, set this uh, new variable, but it's going to be actually the same name. With local variables, I can use the same name. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing percent pick. So I'm converting this array. Technically, this is an array separated by commas. I'm going to convert it to a long string. And then once we convert it to a long string, regex is going to see that long string as one line so we can cut out everything across that one line. Whereas if we try to do this same thing with this, in a, this array, I'm sure there's ways to do it, but this way works fine for me. It only involves me adding one little extra action to uh, my task. So we're converting this array to a string. And then, now watch this. If I come down here and I flash here, if I flash percent pick without the parentheses, it's going to show the exact same thing we just saw with the array, but again, Tasker's going to see it as one long line of stuff, a string, I guess is what we can call it. It's the same thing. Ahrefs, they're separated by commas, but it's not, Tasker's not seeing this as an array anymore. So what I want to do with this string here is I want to variable search and replace. Now we got to remember here, y'all, that we got 32 matches. Um, let me take this right here. I'm going to take one of my matches. And I'm going to do some regex on this. All I want to search for within this thing is the following. I want to search for HTTP. Notice it's highlighting in blue. Dot star not greedy. I don't think it really matters, but um, dot PNG. Notice what's in blue. All right. Now that's one match because I copied over this one little piece here. I'm just trying to get you to understand really what's going on here. Um, I don't think we had necessarily, we, okay, I had the same idea right here as well. But what we're doing is we're searching through that long string with those 32 matches and we're looking for this web address. Well, there should be 32 of those because again, we had 32 matches a moment ago back here, 32 of these little A, hrefs, blah, 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 blahs. So that means we should have 32 of these HTTPs, blah, 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 dot PNG. And as you can see, all of these, they look the same. The only thing really different, the real difference is whatever team picture it is. We're trying, trying to pull the team pictures here. So if I scroll down a little bit more, I mean, boom, we got another one. So it's going to search through that string. There's the regex I'm performing on it performing on it, and now I'm storing it as percent pick. So now my percent pick is no longer going to be the ahref blah, blah, blah. Now I'm going to have an array that has just the web address, the HTTP blah, 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 dot PNG. And that's something that we can use in KLWP because we can pull images using links. So let me come down here. Now watch where I'm flashing at. So we're getting... We're pulling the ahrefs, all this junk right there. We're, that's, um, we're pulling those matches. We're saving them or storing them as an array. Then we're converting that array to a string. And now we're going to cut out um, or store the HTTP matches that end in .png. Now watch what happens here if I try to flash percent pick now. All right, let me show you percent pick one more time. It's still doing ahrefs. And you're like, okay, I thought we cut them out. Well, remember... We stored, we searched for HTTP, blah, 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 and we stored matches in percent pick. When we store matches, it's going to store them as an array. So if I show the array percent pick, watch this. All we should see are HTTP with some address, and it should end in .png, and we should have some commas, and we should have 32 of these. We're not going to be able to see all 32 of them right now, but watch. Look, HTTP, no, no ahrefs, none of that junk right there. We're getting just the H 
TTP with the dot PNG. Let me play that one more time so you can see that. I hope that makes sense. Crazy. All right, from here, what do we want to do? Now, let's go back to this um, web, the HTTPD, that global variable that has the entire source code stored in it, because I'm done with pick. I've got, I've taken it, I've cut out the stuff, I've got my web addresses for each pick, I'm done with pick. I'm going to have to send that over to KOWP in a minute. Variable search replace. Now let's try to get the scores. Let's try to get the scores back here at this source code. So to find the scores, I found that if I did this, P class equals total score dot star boom. What that's going to do is return 32 matches as well. Well, I should have 32 scores because I need a score for each team. Now, you may say, okay, why am I doing all this stuff with this piece here and here? Sometimes when, when you try to do regex, it's going to capture the whole line, and sometimes the, the whole line may be including this stuff over here on this side or this stuff on this side. I want to cut it down as, as close as I can, and then we can come in here. Now, if you look at that 27, that's what I really want or whatever other ones we have up here. I know we have we got 32 matches. Look. Like a 20, that's a score for a team. And basically all it's doing is pulling these numbers uh, right here. 20, 21, 27, 23. We're getting ready to do all that stuff right there. Here's Carolina. Notice that was 20. Then we have 21. What was the other ones? 27, then 13. We'll check this out. Scroll down, scroll down. Oh, there's a 27. Oh, it was 23, not 13. Let me double check. Yeah, 27, 23. Cool. All right, so what we're doing here, by me doing that regex pattern matching that I have there, I want to store those matches and score. So what it's going to do now is it's going to take all 32 of these little blue lines that you see, there's 32 of them in here, and we're going to store that in an array because it's going to separate them with commas. Well, you guessed it. We want to take that percent score and it's an array. I want to store it as just a string. That way I can search through this string score and cut out all the little things here. I want to cut that out. I want to cut that out and everything in between it. I also want to cut this out, this out, and everything in between it. Therefore, it's going to leave me with nothing but that. So I'm not, when I store this uh, array as, an, as a string, and then I search for this. So basically I'm searching for a less than symbol and I'm being not greedy. So searching for that. Watch. I can just type it in. Boom, 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 boom. Now you may say, oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff in here that's blue. But in all honesty, if I take this right here, you got to remember we've already matched the 32 pieces. So we got 32 of these things. Now if I do the regex on just this part, notice what it's going to do here. It's highlighting this and this. It's not highlighting that. Well, that's what I want. So what do I want to do here? I want to search for those things that you see in blue, and I want to. I don't want to store the matches. I don't want to store those. I want to replace them with absolutely nothing. So replace matches, and I'm leaving that blank. What that's going to do is essentially delete them, which is going to leave me with nothing but the scores. There should be 32 scores here. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to come down here. I've searched. I've replaced all that tagging stuff. Where did it go? I want it right here. And I want to flash the score. Percent score. All right, let's see what we get. Check it out. Nothing but numbers. Did you see that? It's storing all, or it's got all those numbers stored as percent score. And we're gonna come back in a moment and take these pieces and we're gonna split them to convert them back to an array. But for now, what do we have? We have all 32 pictures done up here. We have all our scores done up to here. Now let's get the dates. Well, lucky for us, the date can be done relatively quickly by doing a regex match on this. I want to search, variable search and replace. I'm searching through that long source code, and I want to match the following. Uh, dot star, date, dot star, boom. Check out how many matches we have now. We have 16 matches, but we're going to still end up with 32 pieces. You'll see why right here in a second. 
So there's 16 matches that show basically it's going to pull this date. And that's what I want to get out of this thing. Well, notice there's a comma in here. So since there's a comma in here, and then when we go to do the matching, we convert an array, technically there's going to be two pieces that make up this one match. Because when we separate them by commas, um, it's going to create 32 pieces because there's already a comma in there. I hope that makes sense, but it's going to be helpful. It, it'll work just fine when we go over to KOWP. It actually makes things a little bit easier to remember as you go through and do all your uh, coding pieces in KLWP. So I'm searching for that. I got 16 matches. I want to store those matches in percent date. So since it's storing those matches, again, it's going to be in an array. Well, I want to take that array date with parentheses is how you show an array. I want to store it as a string, a long line of stuff. That way, once I store that as a string, I can now variable search and replace. I want to do the same thing I did while ago with the scores. Because notice, all I really want is the Sunday, September 11th or whatever date. So basically, I want to get rid of everything that's in between these symbols. And you have to be not greedy. Very similar to what I did back here. I have to be not greedy because if I was greedy, watch what happens if I take away this question mark. That's going, that's going to delete the 27. I want to be not greedy so it looks for the first occurrence of the greater than symbol. And it takes all this and all this and it throws it away. Why does it throw it away? How does it throw it away? I go to replace matches with nothing. So there, we got the dates. And to show you that further, let me flash. Let me come right here because this is where we're at our dates. We're searching for that. We're converting it to a string. We're removing all the greater than, less than with stuff in between it being not greedy. So if I flash the string date, it's a string right now still, remember that. If I flash that, we should see these dates. There's 16 of them, but technically there's gonna be 32 pieces here because we um, have a comma already in our date. If I come right here, oh man, did I lose? Oh, here it is, nope. There it is. We're gonna have 32 pieces to this array when we convert it back to an array because notice there's a comma already here and when we go to variable split, it's gonna split um, the Sunday and the September 11th into two pieces. So now here we go. We want to convert these pieces back to an array. We got a bunch of strings um, with the exception of the pick. Because the pick, remember what we did here? Um, when we did variable search and replace, we searched through that percent pick and uh, we stored the matches as percent pick. This is already back to an array because I was searching for that web address. Whereas the other two pieces we did, the score and the date, we were actually cutting things out to get the dates. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a variable split. We're going to have to do a variable split on percent score, splitter, comma, delete base. All right, that's going to take those pieces and convert them to an array. Um, take percent date, splitter, comma, delete base. All right, and now here comes... You know, that's the bulk of it. That's getting all the information. Now we want to send this stuff over to KOWP. This one, two, three are all the send variables I need to send all of this information. We're talking 32 web addresses for images when we have 16 games. Uh, what else? We're talking 32 scores, one for each team, and then those dates. Well, here's what we can do. I'm just creating a local variable and I'm calling it number. Variable set percent number to zero and I'm just, I got do maths checked. All right, a if statement. If percent number is less than percent pick the array that we did the variable split on, pick, pick number is gonna be 32 in this case because we have 32 web addresses. Remember there were 16 games, 32, and I put a label on this just for convenience. Okay, so label, I called it loop. Now what I want to do to this thing is I want to, in Tasker, the first element in an array is going to be one. Whereas like in Java or JavaScript, the, the first element in an array is zero. Its index is zero. But in Tasker, we do, it is a one. So I'm setting it to zero, and if that number is less than 32 in this case, I want to add one to it. So now number becomes one. 
Then we're going to do three send intents. One is for the picture, one is for the scores, and one is for the date. And it's going to be sending all of these pieces over. So send intent. Here's how you fill this stuff in. I'm not too, I mean, I, I've, I've learned a little bit about it. We're going to do the action. There's your action. Extra. This is where, you know, um, like in KOWP, when you go to broadcast, you have to do like broadcast, tasker, comma. Well, tasker is going to be this piece. That's the name. Variable name, though. This is the actual, that's the app name, I guess you could say. The variable name, I'm calling it pick percent number. So percent number right now, remember, since it was less than 32, we added one to it. So this is going to be pick one. What, va what value do we want? Well, now I want to go to my array percent pick, and I want to do percent pick one. It's going to send over that first HTTP blah, 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 dot PNG piece. All right. It's going to do something very similar for the score. So tasker, score, percent, number. Remember, number still one right now. All right. So it's going to, I'm going to call this one in KOWP score one. What actual value is getting sent? The score that sits in the score array in position number one. This is how we can send over an array, a single item in an array. Percent score, that's my array, in parentheses, if we put a one there, which number is one right now, it's going to send over the score for the first team in that game. And then we want to send over the date. So here I have uh, tasker, percent or date percent number so this is going to be date one that's going to be the name of the variable the value of that variable in kowp is going to be percent date uh, percent number so it's going to be the first piece inside of my data array now remember date had 16 dates but since we split date we split date with the splitter comma it's going to create 32 pieces because remember I mentioned this earlier the date does have a comma in it so it's going to split those into two separate pieces which is going to create 32 items now so we're sending a picture link we're sending a score we're sending a date what do we want to do or we're sending it whether it be a day of a week or the actual date of the month well, what do we want to do? Once we do all this, we want to go back to this label, I, or, or you can just say go back to this part, go back to action 15. But if you create a label like I did here, I called it loop, um, just in case you start moving your pieces around and stuff like that, it will always go back to that particular label loop. So that's the benefit of naming it there. So what it's going to do is going to go back to here, and now remember, zero was the original piece. We added one. When it comes back around, Percent number, which is 1, that's going to be less than 32 in this case. So we want to add 1 to it. Now it becomes 2. So all of these pieces where I had percent number inside of these intents, the, those percent numbers are going to become 2. So it's going to be pick 2. And then we want the second item in our pick array. And the same thing is going to happen for the... Uh, remember, numbers now percent numbers now going to be 2. So score 2. We want the second item in our score array. And then the same thing's going to happen for date, the date. So we've got date two, percent date, and we want the second item in our date. And how long is it going to do this loop, if you will? It's going to do this until percent number. Remember, we're adding one each time we do this. We're adding one, so it does this. It goes back to here. So now we're at three. Um, well, eventually we're going to be at three. Uh, so percent numbers two, that's less than 32, let's add one to it. So it becomes three. It runs this stuff, it goes back here, three is less than 32, it becomes four. We run this stuff, it goes back to this, and it's going to do it all the way up until we get to um, 31. Once we get to 31 and it sends this, it's going to come back to here and percent number 31 is less than 32, yes, so it's going to add one to it. And in this case, finally, we are going to get to where we sent that last picture, the last score, and the last part of our date. And once it's done with all that, because once it adds one and we get 32 finally, 32 is not going to be less than 32. So it's going to shoot down here to the else, and I have a flash NFL scoreboard updated. That's what you saw a moment ago or way back at the beginning of the video when it kept saying NFL scoreboard updated. That's just letting me know how quick that task ran. Then I have a few more things. I have end if, and then I'm having some other things uh, set as well. 
uh, percent games, variable set percent games is going to be the number of elements I have in my pick array, which is 32, and it's going to divide it by two. But this can definitely change depending on how many games we have in that week. For example, if we had 15 games in that week, pick number, our array, the number of elements in our array pick will now be 30, and when we divide it by two, we still get 15 games. And the reason why I want to do that is so that I can send that variable over very quickly to KOWP, where it's going to be, I'm calling it game, um, and the number I'm sending over is percent games, which is going to help me all in all ultimately determine how many games I have, um, some other pieces I got to talk about too, which I'm going to save that for part two. I know I said I, there's two other tasks that we have to create. So if I go back into Tasker, um, let me take away, let me clean this up. I don't need this flash thing anymore. That was just for me to teach you some stuff, hopefully teach you. And then week add, week subtract. These are quick ones. Maybe you can kind of get the idea of what we want to do there. This is going to allow us to do uh, advanced weeks or go back weeks. So add a week. There's my task there. And then subtract a week. Bam. Um, as you can see, we're using that global week thing that I referred to back at the beginning of the video. And then I have these week adds and week subtracts. I have it actually performing that long task, NFL.com. So it's going to perform that every time I trigger one of these tasks. But again, I'll dive into that a little bit uh, deeper when I cover part two because all we know how to do now is, is pull all this junk. We have all the junk sent over to KOWP. And now KOWP, we have to pull all these variables. But again, the big plus here, not only getting better at regex, was uh, what, again, David referred, or David showed me um, back here about using intents and putting those intents inside of a loop. So it's sending these variables, and all I have to do is type it in three times, one for pick, one for score, one for date, and we can run it inside of this loop, and it's going to send those variables. And they all have a different name. Remember that. Remember that now, the, the name for each variable, yeah, the, the, the extension name or whatever that thing's called, tasker, that's going to be the same. But the variable name is going to be score one, score two, score three, score four, score five. That's what we're going to have to use as our custom variable name. And then the value that gets sent is going to be the first item in the array score, the second item in the array score, the third item in the array score. But um, same thing for pick, same thing for date. I hope that makes sense. It's crazy. I know it. But, um, I mean, you know, again, back to, to the big idea. This right here is, you may not like it, you may not care, but I think it's pretty sweet how we can take a website full of junk and get what we want to get out of it. In this case, dates, pictures, and scores. And there you have it. That's how we can, uh, part one of creating an NFL scoreboard. Of course, the visual piece will come in part two. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.